about jujutsu, about the seven Buryu. Uh, people have been asking about the shape of the hands when there are some atenio or some, some strikes. For example, in the first technique, so we enter in the ski, in a, a get ski like this, and in the second technique, we have. This an open hand with a shoto at the knee. And uh, the main reason for that is the historical feature behind each each of each temple or the couple to itself, you know, that, that mask they would use. Uh, it could also, um, when you strike with, with your bare hands, it could hurt your hands and it could injure them. And for these reasons, some at the knee are performed like this, others like this, others like this, others with the open hand, others with your fingers. But it's very often uh, related to the to what you intend with your technique and with the historical features behind each of them. In this particular case, in the well, let's say in the in the first one, you enter like this, and so since we strike, since we enter, and our hara is landed, is rooted down. So as we enter. His, his back or his primary axis, it gets just like this, uh, high and it goes backward, which gives us the condition to enter, making this, you know, um, entering with our chest and our shoulder very close to him, and so having this kind of posture, which is very typical of Jujutsu. So, very remember, we have in this technique the condition to enter, defending ourselves, our main, um, the most important points of our body, our targets, our main targets. And then we enter like this, which gives us the condition to enter very close to him. And then, in just one turn, just one, one step, spin or hip. And uh, actually, what people think is that we should enter first, and then lower, or hara, and then throw him. But uh, in Jujutsu, it's a bit different. What we think, what, what they would think at a time is they should enter and they should strike, they should, they, they should have a strong impact from your, from the back of your hara, of your hips, into his hara. And so this, this strike, this impact should be able to, to throw him. So, one, we enter, and in just one turn. In the second technique, on the other hand, we have this because if he had a mempo here, it could injure our hands, our closed hands. But furthermore, there's something else. If we just strike like this, as we did in the first technique, we have the, the notion of impact, which means that at least 70% of all, of all of our power, our energy, should be restrained to just that point, that single point. So, for example, if I, uh, if I do this, even if I strike, but if my movement extends to the, the next levels of, of freedom of movement, for example, we stroke here, if we strike here, but it expands to here and or there, like this, this is not an explosion. It's still an atemi, but not an explosion. Now, if he strikes and we do this, and most of our power is just focused on this part, then we have an explosion. So if we follow this, this definition, in the second technique, we could have an explosion, or we could have an impulse which would mean this. And for each of, of course, different consequences. In this case, what we do is we enter striking, we enter hitting, but as, as our hand is like this, we won't take his, his primary axis that much, just enough to get ourselves protected here. And if we take if we take, if we, if we have some analysis of the weight, which is a second very important point, when we do this, 
this plate is unbalanced you know, for, for this area, which gives us the condition to make his hara or his hips locked by the side. And this also happens because we won't stop here. When we are here, we are just, we're just moving enough to lock his shoulder, to lock his, his elbow, and then sit spinning for this side. Of course, nowadays this is just one technique, and uh, we want the okay to feel well and to be able to, to make an okay knee and to stand up okay. We let him go, but if you think about it as they would think, as the ancient potters would think, what we would want is to start to get him locked. So can I do this? If the Hara roots until the end, you know, with one beginning and one end, it would be quite difficult for him to you know, just roll off and just have some look and eat. And So, our left leg would lock his shin and we, we would have his, his arm and his elbow and shoulder locked already. But of course, this, this is of course this is not what we want in this technique. Um, but then, if we come back to our point of analysis here, the action of this hand is like this because we want to strike him. He, he could have a mempo or kabuto itself and we don't want to injure our own hands, bare hands. And to shift his weight towards this, this volume, towards, uh, you know, in order to lock the side of his hip. And so when we lock here, and as he is still locked, we just root down, sit down, and spin. So you have less conditions. You just follow your, your technique and have a free okay